This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. It's another case for that most famous of all manhunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented by the three great Linux home brighteners, Linux Clear Gloss, Linux Cream Polish, and Linux Self-Polishing Wax, created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure, Death in the Pool. Or Nick Carter and the mystery of the mink coat. In just a moment, we'll hear how an expensive mink coat helped Nick Carter solve the mystery of the dead man found floating in the lily pool. But first, here's something you'll want to remember. A home is a place to enjoy. That's why you keep it as lovely as you can. Thousands of American homemakers have discovered that Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, is the way to new wall beauty. Now, renewing the beauty of your floors, Linux self-polishing wax gives a satiny luster without tiresome rubbing. And it resists wear, water, and dirt amazingly, for it contains real carnauba wax. You can actually clean with a damp cloth or mild suds. What's more, Linux self-polishing wax, the non-skid floor finish, resists slip even when water is spilled on it. Get Linux self-polishing wax at your paint, hardware, or department store. Headquarters for all three great Linux home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As our story opens, Nick and Patsy, his assistant, are driving home a girl who is not feeling well. Where does she live, Patsy? In the Gray Bar Apartments, Nick. It's the one with the big lily pool in the court. Oh, that one. She would live in a place like that. All show, nothing else, just like Sally. I wish you wouldn't talk that way about her, Nick. She used to be one of my best friends years ago. Well, she's no friend of mine. I have no use for girls that drink the way she does. She's had a lot of trouble recently, Nick, and she just drinks to make herself forget. Her husband divorced her about a year ago just because she went out on a few parties he didn't approve of. She's been alone ever since. Funny, you standing up for her, Patsy. Usually you'd be the first to condemn anyone who plays around the way I understand she does. All right, Nick, think what you like. Just as long as we get her home to her apartment so I can put her to bed. Yep. Who's going to bed? Evelyn's young yet. Let's go somewhere. The only place you're going, young lady, is home to bed. Well, who's that? I don't know him. Oh, yes, you do, Sally. That's Nick Carter, the man I work with. Never heard of him. This the place? Just ahead, Patsy? Yeah, stop at this first entrance. She lives on this side. Okay. Come on, Come on, now, Sally. This is where you live. I'll get out first and give you a hand. Get out, Miss Sally. Right. Don't need a hand. Can take care of myself. Want me to go up with you? No, Nick, you wait here. She'll be all right. All right. But don't let her keep you up there all night. I won't. Uh-oh, I better go after her. She'll fall in the lily pool if she's not careful. Yeah. She's getting pretty close to the edge of it. You're better. Oh, in heaven's name, Mother. Oh, Come on. What's the matter, Sally? What is it? Man in the pool. A man. He's dead. Dead. Ah! That's you, Nick? Yes, Riley, over here. By the edge of the pool. Yeah, Patsy phoned me that she found a man's body in the pool. Drowned, was he? Flash your lights this way, Riley. Okay. Holy smokes, Nick. Look in his back. Yes, a knife. Right between the shoulder blades. Did you find the body, Nick? Not exactly. It was Patsy's girlfriend who found it, really. What's her name? Sally Reeves. Oh, not that one. Where is she now? Oh, Patsy's putting her to bed. She lives in this house. She's... Well, slightly under the weather. Uh, how did she happen to find him? Oh, Patsy and I were at a small friendly gathering, having a quiet evening, and then she walked in. Got well lit up and wrecked the party. Patsy wanted to bring her home, so we did. As she went by the pool, she started screaming. I came over here and found this. Well, let's have a look at him. Nick, that's Arthur Reeves. What? That's Sally Reeves, ex-husband. And you say she found him? 
That's right. Very interesting. Maybe she found him because she knew just where to look for him. Lieutenant Riley seems to think Sally did it herself. He's a dope. Well, you said she's hated her husband ever since he divorced her, Patsy. Maybe she did kill him. Oh, Nick. Well, she certainly acted guilty enough when they questioned her. That doesn't mean anything, and you know it. Well, maybe and maybe not. Well, Riley will find out. Oh, Nick, you can't leave it to Riley. Well, that's certainly what I'm going to do. This is none of my affair. Nick Carter, you've got to make it your affair. No, Patsy. But I'm not going to see Sally put in jail for something she didn't do. You've got to help her, Nick. And why? Because I asked you to, that's why. Oh, Patsy. Oh, Nick, will you do it? Well, I suppose I'll have to if you put it that way. Oh, Nick, I knew you would. But it's against my better judgment. I don't care why you do it, just as long as you do it. Now, where do we start? Well, I guess the best thing is to go down and see Riley in the morning. We'll find out just how the case against her stacks up so far. Then we'll see where we go from there. Hey, good morning, Nick and Patsy. Hi, Riley. Well, Lieutenant, have you let Sally out of jail yet? Let her out? I should say not, Patsy. She's in for good the way it looks now. She did it all right. Riley, do you mind telling us just what the case is against her so far? No, I don't mind at all. Uh, which side are you on in this, Nick? I'm on the side of the law, just as I always am. She'd know me well enough for that by now. Oh, sure, sure. Well, here it is. Reeves was Sally's ex-husband. He divorced her for seeing too much of other guys, and she hated him for it. In spite of the 500 bucks a month alimony he was paying her, or, or supposed to be paying her. Well, she said he hadn't paid her anything for the last three months. Exactly. Uh, you've proven my case for me, Patsy. What? Now, Reeves' partner tells me that Reeves was having a tough time making both ends meet, let alone paying his alimony. He spent too much on his second wife. And here's another thing. Reeves just took out a $50,000 insurance policy in this Sally's favor. Hmm. Is that so? He hmm? had to. That was part of the divorce settlement. You should have done it before this. Yeah, I know. But that insurance policy is another swell motive for Sally to want Reeves dead. She wouldn't kill anybody. Well, here's another point, then. She says she got to your party about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Well, the medical examiner says the guy was killed at least by 9 o'clock. So she could have killed him and gone to your party for an alibi. Where does she say she was from, say, 8 o'clock? Up to the time she got to our party. Uh, she says Reeves called her and asked if he could see her about 8.30. So she said yes and sat in her apartment waiting for him, but he never showed up. So she says. It's a fine alibi, I don't think. It's no alibi at all. Who was the last one to see Reeves alive? Oh, he, his partner, Workman. He said Reeves was at the shop, but left to go to see Sally about something. Amazing. Now everything points to Sally, isn't it? Oh, it ain't amazing, Nick. It's natural. She did it. She didn't do it, and Nick's going to prove it. Oh, is he now, Patsy? Well, how is he going to get around the facts? Nick's going to dig up some new facts, Lieutenant. Then you'll see how wrong you are. Well, maybe, but I doubt it. Look, Lieutenant, can I see Sally? Oh, sure, sure. I guess it'll be all right. Uh, would you like to see her now? If I can. Okay, I'll fix it. You go ahead with your investigation, Nick. I'll go back to the office and wait for you when I'm through here. All right. I'll see you then in a little while. I think I'll go down and have a talk with Reeves' partner first. Now, Mr. Workman, you say Reeves was here in the store last night after dinner? Uh, yes, Mr. Carter. He was checking stock with me. Then he left to see Sally. That was about 8.30. He said he'd be right back to help me finish checking. Did he say why he wanted to see her? He said he was going to ask her to let him out of some of the alimony he owed her. I see. But he didn't come back. No. I stayed here by myself until about one o'clock. Mm -hmm. I should judge by the type of furs you carry here, Mr. Workman, that you must do a pretty good business. That's right, Mr. Carter. Then how do you account for Mr. Reeves having such a hard time keeping up his alimony payments? Well, Mr. Reeves is a heavy spender. He spent money freely himself. And his second wife was extravagant. Mm. Did Reeves have any insurance for the partnership? The kind, I mean, that leaves you any money if he dies. Oh, no, Mr. Carter. We talked about it, but decided it wasn't necessary. Have you and he ever had any trouble? Oh, not the slightest. We've always been the best of friends. Mm hmm. Well, thanks for your trouble, Mr. Workman. I guess that's all for now. Anytime I can help you, let me know. Oh, uh, by the way, mind if I use your phone? Oh, not at all. It's on the desk over there. Thanks. 
Just want to call my office. I'll be in the back room if you want me. Thank you. Nicholas Carter's office. Oh, Patsy, how'd you find Sally? Oh, better than I expected, Nick. She's so mad at Riley for thinking she did it that she hasn't had time to be depressed. How'd you make out? Nothing new. That is nothing definite. I'm going to see Reeves' wife. Then I have to drop in on the DA, so I may be tied up the rest of the day. Oh, that's good, Nick. Because Sally wants me to go and stay in her apartment while she's away. She has a cat and a canary, and she wants me to take care of them. And I think that's a swell idea. What's so swell about it? Well, don't you see? It'll give me a chance to go all through a thing. I'll bet you I find something to help prove she's innocent. Or guilty. Now, Nick, don't be like that. If you'll drop over there around 8 o'clock tonight, I'll show you what I found. Okay, see you about 8 then. At Sally's apartment. No wonder Sally couldn't afford to let any of the alimony installments be this. Lost her money to live in this place. <laughs> Patsy! 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 Patsy, where? Patsy! What happened, Patsy? Patsy, can you hear me? Uh, that you and he? Yes, what's the matter? A man. He, he tried to. to... Uh... Patsy. What started out to be, for Nick at least, a routine investigation has suddenly taken a strange turn. What's happened to Patsy? And what does this have to do with Nick's attempts to find out who really killed Arthur Reeves? We'll see in just a moment. If you have furniture you treasure, you want to keep it handsome. And Linux Cream Polish will protect its beauty effectively. For Linux Cream Polish is designed to restore your furniture's original beauty in one quick, easy application. Yes, Linex Cream Polish actually cleans as it polishes, removing the cloudy accumulation of dust and polish, banishing messy fingerprints, helping conceal ugly scratches. And it dries to a hard, lustrous finish that leaves no oily film to attract more dust. This makes less work for you. Linex Cream Polish, the creamy white preparation that saves you one whole step in your furniture upkeep, is truly the modern way to protect the things in your home. Depend on it to give you added leisure, to give your furniture added loveliness. Ask for it by name. Linex. L-I-N-X. Linex Cream Polish. One of the three great Linex home brighteners. Get it now at your nearest paint department or hardware store, where you'll find it together with Linex self-polishing wax, Linex clear gloss, and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that covers in one quick coat and dries in one hour. And now, back to our story. We left Nick trying to revive an unconscious Patsy so he could find out what had happened to her in Sally Reeves' apartment. Feeling better now, Patsy? Yes, Nick. I'm all right. Except for that crack on the head. Well, what happened? Can you tell me? I don't quite know, Nick. Standing here in front of the bedroom mirror, trying on Sally's new fur coat. Oh, Nick, isn't it heavenly? Yes, yes. It's certainly a valuable piece of fur. But what happened, Patsy? Well, as I was trying on the coat, a man came through the door. He's wearing a mask. He told me to take off the coat and give it to him or he'd kill me. I told him I wouldn't do it. Did he have a gun? Oh, I didn't see one. How'd he talk? Well, it was sort of funny, as if he were trying to disguise his voice. It sounded as if he might have had something in his mouth. Probably did. It's an old trick. Without your best friend wouldn't recognize you. Then what? He tried to jerk the coat off me, so I scratched his face for him. Good for you. Not so good, Nick. Look at my fingernails. They're all broken. Oh, they'll go in again. Then what happened? He hit me and knocked me down just as you rang the buzzer. Must have gone out the back door as you came in the front. Then I must have gone out cold. He was certainly completely out when I found you. What does all this mean, Nick? Where did Sally get this coat? You know? Oh, yes, her ex-hubby gave it to her instead of some back alimony that he owed her. He took it out of the stock at the store about two weeks ago and brought it to her. Took it out of the stock at the store, huh? Well, does that mean something to you? I don't know, Patsy. But either this coat is tied up with a murder, or it's an extraordinary coincidence. Well, how can you find out? Get the history of the coat, first of all. Well, how do you do that, for heaven's sake? I know a man who can tell me. Come on. I'm glad you phoned him in advance. I'd hate to have made all this trip for nothing. 
Hello, Mo. Nick, how are you? Come in, come in. This is Patsy Bowen, my assistant, Mo. How do you do? Hello, glad to see you. And now, what is this puzzle you say you got for me? Here's a fur coat, Mo. Have a look at it. Why, it's beautiful, Nick. Beautiful. What can you tell me about it? Well, it's worth at least $4,000. Now, that isn't what I mean. What can you tell me about the coat itself? So everything I could tell you about it, Nick. But I might have to rip it apart a little here where it's sewed. Go ahead. I want to know as much as you can tell me. Sure, Nick, sure. Now, I rip a little of the lining here. Then I cut a few of the stitches here. Where the skins are sewed together. Now, look, Nick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see this little blue mark on the skin here? Yes. That means the coat was sold by Fishbone Brothers. Uh, their mark. The skins were sewed together by Herman Schultz, who works for them. Nobody else in the business stitches like Herman. Anything else? Well, Fishbone Brothers make up the coat. They sell it to a retailer. <laughs> That's all I could tell. Suppose they could tell me anything else about it? You can ask them. They got a store right on the block from me. I could telephone them that you are coming, and they should take good care of you right away. Thanks, Mo. Oh, by the way, that knife there on the counter, is that any particular kind of knife? All for you, so make garments used in, Nick. That is a good knife for training the skins. Why do you ask? Oh, just saw one while ago, and I was curious. Come on, Patsy. Let's go see Fishburne Brothers. <laughs> to keep you waiting, Mr. Carter, but I wanted to be sure of the facts. This coat was sold by us to Perillon. In Perillon, sold the coat to a Mrs. Jackson Moody who lives in Boston. But three months ago, she reported it stolen and offered $500 reward for its return. $500? Oh, Nick, we can claim that reward. We found the coat. You found it, Patsy. The reward's yours if you want it. Is that what you wanted to know, Mr. Carter? Yes, thanks. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Oh, Patsy, call Riley and tell him to meet us at Reeves and Workman's place. Well, what are we going back there for? I want to see if Workman can add anything to what we already know about this stolen coat. Goodbye. Hmm? Oh, goodbye. <laughs> Why, Mr. Carter, I didn't expect to see you again tonight. I just want to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. Oh, uh... No, uh, not at all. Come in, all of you. Working pretty late, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am. You see, without Mr. Reeves, there's so much more for me to do. It's pretty dark in here for you to be working, isn't it? Oh, no, I can see plenty well in this light. Well, uh, Lieutenant Riley has to make some notes, so... Make notes? On what, Nick? Why, in Mr. Workman's answers to my questions, naturally. Sure you won't mind if I turn on another light, will you, Mr. Workman? Oh, now, really, Mr. Carter, Nick, I... Nick, the... look! His face is scratched right across the cheek. Uh, yes, uh, there was a cat sleeping on a pile of furs a little while ago. I didn't see him, and when I tried to move the furs, he jumped at me and scratched me. What an alibi. Uh, uh, now, uh, what was it you wanted to ask me? Well, first, Mr. Workman, I'd like your permission to look around your shop a bit. Oh, now, see here, Mr. Carter, I don't see what right you have Riley. to come in here and... Uh... See that Mr. Workman stays where he is while I take a look around the place. Oh, look here, you can't come Let's in here and do it. Where you are, Workman. Nick knows what he's doing. But I don't understand Just what... Just tight. Nick will tell you when he's ready. Well, this is an interesting package, Workman. Addressed to some firm out in San Francisco. Seems to be full of pieces of fur coats, some odd neck pieces, and other odd pieces of fur. All expensive fur, too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's uh, just some pieces I had left over. I don't think so, Workman. What uh, do you think they are, Nick? I think Workman is a receiver of stolen furs. Really? He cuts them up and ships them to the West Coast. His accomplice out there ships his stuff east. And they put them together and mix the furs up so they can't be identified. You're crazy. I, I wouldn't get mixed up in anything like that. Riley? Hmm? Ever see a knife like this one before? By golly, Nick, that's the same kind of knife that killed Reeves. You're quite sure? Of course I am. That same dark-colored handle, the same two metal bands around it, I'd know that anywhere. That's the same kind of knife we saw at Moe's a little while ago, Nick. Except that the handle is different. Exactly, Patsy. The knife's a regular furrier's knife. But I imagine that sometime in the past year, Mr. Workman had new handles put on all his old knives. Right, Mr. Workman? Say, now, look here. If you're trying to connect me with Reeves' murder, you're all wrong. I didn't kill him. 
Ever see this fur coat before? Uh, no. And I suppose you weren't the man who tried to take it away from Patsy tonight at Sally's apartment. No, of course not. Uh, what's that about, Nick? You didn't tell me about anybody trying to rob Patsy. Reeves gave Sally a very expensive fur coat out of the stock here at the store instead of paying her some back alimony. But Reeves didn't know it was stolen. Then when you arrested Sally, workmen knew he had to get that coat back before you found it, recognized it from the description that's been sent out, and traced it back to him. So we tried to steal it from Patsy tonight in Sally's apartment. Lies. All lies. Hey, Nick, I'm beginning to see what you're leading up to. Do you, Riley? I'll say I do. Reeves finds out that Workman is dealing his stolen furs. They get into a fight about it. Workman tells Reeves the coat he gave to Sally was stolen. Reeves is sore and starts for Sally's house to get it back. That's where he was headed when he was killed last night. I'll bet that's it. Go on, Riley. Doing well so far. But when Reeves leaves, Workman gets scared. He doesn't want Reeves to tell anybody he's selling stolen furs. But the only way he can stop him is to kill him. So he grabs one of his fur knives, beats it up to the apartment house before Reeves gets there, waits for him, and kills him. Why, it's as plain as the note on your face. You're crazy, all of you. I didn't kill Reeves. Where were you between 8 and 10 last night? I told you I was here in the store, taking stock, alone. That ain't no alibi. Come on, workman. I'm taking you down to headquarters. We got ways of making fellas that have nothing to say talk a lot down there. Oh, I was right, Nick. Sally didn't do it. Oh, Nick, you're wonderful. Well, thanks for those few kind words, Patsy. Okay, Riley. Take him down to headquarters and wait for me there. Well, ain't you coming, Nick? Now, there's one last bit of evidence that'll clinch this case, Riley, and I think I know right where to put my hand on it. Meet you in your office in about half an hour. Nick. Well, glad to see the four of you gathered here to welcome me. Riley, Patsy, Sally, and Mr. Workman. Mm -hmm. Now let's sit down and be real cozy. What's all this about, Mr. Carter? They won't tell me anything except that you've got some news for me. Okay, Nick. Okay, Riley, go right ahead. Well, Sally, it's like this. Mr. Workman here is the man who killed your ex-husband, Arthur Reeves. That's a lie, Riley. Oh, no, it is. Selling stolen furs, your knife, Sally having a fur coat that was stolen, and you trying to get it back, it all adds up. Just wait till the jury gets it. Then, you know I didn't do it. Of course we know it. And I'm apologizing right here and now to both you and Patsy for being such a dumb idiot as I was. I should have known you wouldn't kill him. Isn't it wonderful, Sally? You're free. And Nick did it. I knew he would. Now, I can collect the $500 reward for recovering the stolen fur coat. Oh, it's just super, super, Patsy. You collect that money, and I'll collect the $100,000 on the insurance that Arthur took out for me. I don't think you will, Sally. But, Mr. Carter, why not? Yes, Nick, why can't you get that money? Sally? Yeah? You told me Reeves never got to your apartment last night. That you didn't see him at all, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I waited and waited, but he didn't come. Riley? Hmm? Got the things you found in Reeves' pocket? Well, sure, Nick. There you are. Sally, in Reeves' pocket was a bill for women's clothes, addressed to you, postmarked the morning of the murder. It must have been delivered to you that afternoon. Now, if you didn't see Reeves, how did that bill get in his pocket? Why, You did see him, didn't you? Yes, he tried to take my fur coat away from me, but I wouldn't let him. And you got into an argument about money, didn't you? He was broke and couldn't give you any, so you gave him this bill and said he could at least pay that, right? Well, he... And by the time he left you, you were so mad you could have killed him, weren't you? But I didn't kill him. Workman did. Workman didn't kill him, Sally. You did. After he left, you grabbed up that furrier's knife, ran down the stairs, rushed over to where he was still standing beside the pool, and plunged the knife in his back before he knew you were there. No. No, I never owned a knife like that. I couldn't have done it. Ever see this picture, Sally? Huh? I found it in your apartment a few minutes ago. A flashlight shot of a tea party you had in your apartment. Dated three months ago. And on the table is one of workman's fur knives being used as a cheese knife. So you did own a knife like that. All right, I... I did kill Arthur. I had to have money quick. I got a lot of bills that have to be paid. He wouldn't give me any money. Insurance was all I could get. So? So I killed him. Well, Nick, so she did do it. I was right all the time. I told you I didn't do it. I knew you didn't do it all along, workman. But I had to do it this way to break down the case against Sally. Sorry. You say you knew all along, Nick? Certainly. A new workman couldn't have done it because he'd never have chosen such a public place as the court inside a large apartment house at nine o'clock on an early fall evening. <laughs> There's altogether too much chance of his being seen. He'd have picked a much safer spot. Furthermore, he never would have killed him before he got that stolen coat back from Sally. Yeah. No, Riley, only someone who was so mad they didn't stop to think would kill a man in such a public place. Well, then I... 
I, I got to let workmen go. He was dealing in stolen furs, wasn't he? Oh, by golly, you're right, Nick. I'll see that he gets his for that, I will. Come along, you. And you too, Sally Reeves. I'm going to push you both right where you belong. I knew it was you right from the very first. And you tried to going to show me up. And you're going to show me up. Hey, well, Nick, I was certainly wrong that time. You certainly were, Patsy. Completely wrong. She wasn't like that when I knew her years ago. Well, times change. So do people. You couldn't know what she's like now. I'm sorry, Nick. Gee, I suppose I'll never hear the end of this. You probably won't, Patsy. But don't feel too bad. If it hadn't been for you, we'd never have caught Workman and broken up his racket and stolen furs. And the right person is going to pay for Reeves' murder. Those are the things that really matter. Always. Just a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. But before they do, a word to the wise. When you use Linux clear gloss on your floors, linoleum, furniture, and woodwork, they look as though you'd spent hours polishing them. And yet Linux clear gloss is so easy to apply, so easy to keep clean. Linux clear gloss is a durable, protective coating which is brushed on easily, drying without brush marks to a tough, transparent surface that sturdily resists alcohol, perfume, fruit acids, boiling water, and hot grease. The brilliant beauty of Linex Clear Gloss is a constant source of satisfaction to every homemaker, for it wears and wears, keeping its good looks for a long, long time. Linex Clear Gloss keeps dirt on the surface, too, where it's easily wiped away. So protect and beautify every wood and linoleum surface in your home with Linex Clear Gloss. It'll add sparkle to your home and save you hours of housework. Thousands of American homemakers have already learned what a time-saving, labor-saving product Linex Clear Gloss is. Learn for yourself what a household help it can be. Ask for it by name. Famous Linex Clear Gloss. Available at your paint, hardware, or department store. If your dealer hasn't received his supply of the three great Linex home brighteners, he'll have them soon. Ask him to save one or all of them for you. Acme will see that he gets them, and you get them, as quickly as possible. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. What exciting story have you got for us next week, Nick? Can you tell us a little about that? Well, Ken, next week I'm going to tell you about a murder in a little country town. Patsy and I had gone there for our vacation. But for that one day, we got very little vacation. A friend of the sheriff was shot to death in his home in the early morning, and the sheriff made Nick take over. The sheriff found one big clue that satisfied him. But Nick found a number of small clues that really solved the murder. What do you call a story, Nick? I call it Murder in the Night. Or the Mystery of the Milkman's Discovery. So long for now. So long, everybody. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs> Next week, at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled... Murder in the Night. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Milkman's Discovery. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is a copyright feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. It is presented at this same time and over these same stations by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linex Clear Gloss, Linex Cream Polish, and Linex Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme quality paints. In the Nick Carter Adventures, Long Clark is starred as Nick. Helen Choate is featured as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White. The programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linex dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.